Alrighty guys, I got the uh, little tap handle here working. We're getting closer. See that runs nice and smooth now. Um, it's definitely a Greenfield, uh, Greenfield tap and die. It's got a little crown with a G, D, and T stamped into it, USA, and it's uh, a number zero. It's very light. It's almost impossible to read that really, but... Uh, <clears throat> it's not perfectly shined up, but I got pretty much all the rust off of it. I just polished it up with a little bit of scotch Bright. Um, I think what I might do now, I might take this thing apart just so you can see how the how the mechanism works. So uh, let me pause the camera here and we'll come back and see if I can get a view of taking it apart. All right, guys. See if I can film this without getting out of frame or messing up. I don't know if you can see right here. There's a little tiny set screw right there. That's what holds this block right here in. So I'm gonna open this here up. Take out this screw. And it, it didn't come out much more difficult than that the very first time. I'm gonna Stick it on a magnet here so I don't lose it. So I don't happen to have another one around. Okay. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do, I'm put it here. And this is uh, pretty much kind of a press fit. we got to tap it out of there. So we'll take our handy little punch here. Drive that block out. You can see how how well they fit this thing. It's it's in there good. Well, I'll mess up my screwdriver trying to get that out. Let's see if I can't drive some more on it over here. Did I get it? <laughs> like I said, I mean this is. It's in there pretty good. Hold it like this here. All right. <clears throat> now, that's out of there, right? And good thing about this, that can pretty much only go in there one direction because that little divot lines up with the set screw hole. Now, I think what I did, this other sliding block here, the other half of the jaw, I just noticed a minute ago, once I had them all together, that there's a little offset. I think they put them all together, and then this is all finished ground or something, probably afterwards. But let's see if we can't fix that right now. So you run this all the way in, and then this kind of runs out of travel eventually. And you can see, man, first time I took this apart, it didn't go out that easy. So you got left-handed threads on this little piece right here. All right, so we'll take that out. Bring it in here nice and close for you to see. And I'm going to, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to go in. So you got left-hand threads there. And I cleaned this up a bunch, but it keeps bleeding rust. And then you got right-hand threads on the outside of this. So as you turn this in, this one's coming out. So counted it only takes about five half turns to run this thing clear in and out okay so then I got that flipped around well just don't want to go in from that side I guess the machining quality on this stuff is absolutely excellent even after it's been frozen solid. Hold on. I hear a little click here. Come on. It's kind of hard to get them two to want to start going. Yeah, I think I'm down here where it gets tight. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let 
Let me see. Put my cheater in here. This little Allen wrench. Whenever that thing gets hard to turn, this makes it a little easier. Okay. Now we've caught the left hand threads. Let's see if it's. <clears throat> this block should get pulled all the way back and bottom out here. If not, then we need to adjust the. Excuse me. Need to adjust how far in this one is to begin with before we lock the two of them together. Kind of a fiddly little job. Maybe we got lucky here. I don't know. Let's see. Oh. Nope. See how there's a space? Okay, so we gotta run it back out. <clears throat> okay, I think it just disconnected right there. Yep, so we'll back it up a half turn, force them together again, and of course it didn't make it. So we can right over again. Sure, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is only maybe the second time I've done this, I think. All right, let's see if that got it. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> Still in the same spot. maybe okay come on now like I said this is a fidgety job not my favorite sort of work I like stuff that just goes together easy but I guess it can't always be easy stop this for right now I'll get this together and then I'll show you okay this. after several more attempts we finally got that timed in there right so now it backs up and the jaw seats all the way up against the outside of the frame here okay so now I'm gonna put this guy right here in here and this has got to be tapped in oh damn it <clears throat> Press fit if I ever saw one. All right, so the trick to getting that to seat back there. Get that pretty much flush. Run that in. Put my little screwdriver in here. Close up on it and then pry it back. See how that pushed it all the way back and then come over here. Push that side back. And we can open that up. All right. I'm going to go get my... Set screw off the magnet. Get that over the table in case I drop it. If it hits the floor, we're in trouble. All right. Got that in. Run that set screw in there. Snug it up. There you go. So this is a... Uh, I looked it up and this is a... Uh, goes from one eighth which is that's pretty close to being one eighth I suppose it's probably not seated all the way when it's at one eighth to a quarter I believe I got a tap right over here <clears throat> there we go I don't know if that's a quarter or not but I guess not <laughs> Boy, that almost goes this must be five sixteenths or something let me look around and see if I got another one here I'll cut back to it in just a minute. All right, I found myself a 1024 tap here, and it's got a little bit smaller end on it. Let's see how it fits in there. 
It's not too bad. It's not quite as solid as I would like it to be. Wobbles a little bit there, don't it? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Can't everything be perfect, I guess? Or maybe I'm up on the rounded shoulder a little bit. Let me have a look here. No, still got a little bit of a rattle. Huh, maybe the jaw was in the right way the other direction. Well, shoot, you know, it almost feels like it did before. Yeah, it's almost like the like the V's in there aren't parallel. All right, let me take this thing apart again off camera and see if I can. Okay, well. I flipped that thing around and it was still wiggling and then I thought well where's this thing here from let's see wow <laughs> isn't that funny I was thinking well maybe it's just a cheap piece of dunk tap well it just happens that this is a greenfield tap and die it's got the same crown emblem and everything on it but uh nonetheless <clears throat> something's wrong with the the square part of that shank I, I dug through and found another one that was had the same size thing. That one fits in there. Uh, oh, excuse me, out of frame. Considerably better. So, I guess we're all good. Anyway, so now if you ever get one of these things is rusted up, you know how it's supposed to come apart. Oh, yeah. They open up a lot better when you turn the, the handle that moves. Um, the way I got this one here unfroze, you know, it was sort of about here when I got it and I squirt a little WD-40 in there pick the penetrating oil you like it probably don't matter really and a little you know I brushed it here with the I got a little brass bristle brush so it's not to scar anything up so I brushed tried to get all the rust that was built up in here out of there <clears throat> squirted some oil in there and then I heated it up with a heat heat gun and you can start to see the the WD-40 will start boiling kind of you can see it bubbling out of there and it starts bringing rusty you know junk with it wipe it off a little more oil a little more heat kind of keep going like that and then I <clears throat> grab my old trusty Ford wrench here and I slip this where does that fit now I just kind of held it there these are smooth jaw it's not like a pipe pipe wrench where I've tear it up. I'm gonna put this guy here through there and just started straining on it. Finally it it moves. Well, once it moves you're home free. Just start wiggling it around and uh, just keep kinda the threads are gonna be really tight at first on this sort of stuff when it's all rusted up like that. And once you get it moving just keep squirting oil in there, wiggling it around, you know, running the threads back and forth. And even even here in the slot, that block was having trouble moving. So when I got it open, I tried to get in there with the brush. And, you know, just get anything that's potentially fouling the works up, out. And run it back and forth. And just kind of keep working it. You can see even right now, I'll see the... I don't know if the camera's getting it, but there's a little bit of orange right there. Well, it's a little bit of rusty oil coming up. And just keep flushing it. Once you get it apart, flush it out really good. Clean it all off. And once I got that all moving, then I took a little strip of red scotch bright or maroon, whatever the heck they call this here. And I just sort of started polishing on it here, you know, just to get the the heavy corrosion off. And uh, this is what we're left with. It'd be nice, uh, you know, a guy could probably, you could really go through and probably shine this thing up and make it look like it was brand new. It's really a shame because when, they've, when they're when they new, you should look it up. It's a uh, color case hardening. Stuff you see on uh, old uh, firearms and these type of tap handles. I want to say they use like charcoal and bone 
and they pack this part inside of that charcoal and bone mixture and they heat it up to a specified temperature I don't know what it is and then they dump the whole lot into water and it'll leave all kinds of interesting rainbow patterns and uh, just sort of you know designs is really decorative but it it'll harden this piece of metal on the outside but it won't harden clear through you know because you want this to be hard you know you don't want it to get dinged and scratched up and whatnot you want these things here to wear and last a long time but you don't want this to be brittle because you're well especially on the bigger ones you know you could be putting some force on this thing so you want it to be soft in the core of the material so that was a an early way of getting the best of both worlds sometimes when you heat treat something it's so brittle you can't you know it becomes very delicate and you could anneal it but then you're annealing the whole thing you know this was a way of having a really hard exterior with still a tough stock soft uh, interior any rate that's enough ranting on that so next time you see an old rusty wrench you know don't necessarily just think oh it's just a piece of junk so here we go you know you gotta buy one of these things new well you can't not from greenfield i don't think they're in business anymore and uh even if they are it's probably still made in china now so good luck happy hunting that's one more tool in the box